So I want, I told you I had a question to start out and it trans, transitions into or from the weekend. And I have a story. Okay. So <laughs> my guy, Guillermo Rigandale, comes up short in Dubai yesterday. Gets knocked down. Take his ass to the nursing home now. Yeah, oh. it, it is probably time for the career, but the, aside from the point. So my question was, and I've never asked you this. Have you ever been in the ring with somebody that good defensively? Whether it's sparring or in a fight, mm. not like to Rigo's level, but like somebody that's like a very defensive fighter, patient that, that tested you, where you're like, wait a second, <laughs> where, where the hell are you? That's a great question. Because I don't, I would guess no. My answer, my first inclination is no. However, I would the first one that comes to mind is Buba Andre. That would make sense. He's yeah. the first one that comes to mind. But I no, I really can't tell you. Oh, you know what? I fought a few Cubans. Okay. So to answer your question, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I fought a few Cubans. Yeah. And they they have a way of making you miss. Yeah. Was Ugas hard to hit? Or? No. Well, yeah. no. Yeah. Ugas was he Ugas him, he wanted him me to fight. At the fight. <laughs> yeah. 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 It was side by side. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Ugas wanted me to fight. You right. know what I mean? Yeah. So he was he was right there trying to you know push me to come at him. Uh, but. Amateur wise, there were a couple of um, of uh, of uh, Cuban fighters that I fought. I think t there were two different Cubans that I fought. Uh, I think total, I fought three amateurs, uh, three different Cubans as amateurs. Um, zero and three against those guys, and then as a pro, I beat um, Ugas. But uh, those other three guys were much slicker. Of course, boxing, yeah, everything was just different as an amateur, you know. Um, but they were slick. They were good. Nice to when see you, you guys yesterday too. Yeah. When you fight a guy like that, um, I've heard you got to let multiple punches go. You got to punch in combination because you're not going to get him with one shot. But like, what's the fine line as a fighter to do that? When the more you open up, the more counter opportunities they get. You know, wh yeah. what do you do against a guy like that? It's like to me, it seems that when you're throwing combinations against a counter puncher, number one, you have to have a really good sense of anticipation of what Connor is going to come back. And beyond that, it's a matter, I think it's a matter of making sure the, the power doesn't come back. And a lot of counter punchers don't really counter punch with power. They counter punch with speed, you yeah. know? And so a lot of times it's like you're getting hit, but you're not getting hit with anything that's going to really stop you. You know what I mean? So a lot of times, especially in a 12 round match, of course we, we move, um, Floyd Mayweather on a completely different of side course. of it, but a lot more times than not, a co a combination puncher or or an aggressive fighter can eventually catch up to the counter puncher. It's um you break the counter puncher down, he doesn't have much power on his on his counter punching, and kind of the list goes on. So, you know, uh, if it was me and I I had a guy in the ring and and. Uh, he was going against a counter puncher. We, I would try a number of different things. I would try the combinations. I would try feigning him and making him be first. You know what I mean? A lot of counter punchers don't really know how to, you know, throw the, throw the first punch. You know, so they that their rhythm is seeing something and coming back. You know, so kind of the, the list kind of goes on. But as I got older, I I learned how to counter the counter. And that's when boxing becomes beautiful. I saw, you know, even, uh, well, they came up short, but Cotto Castillo, uh, Maidana a little bit. He didn't counter, try to f ever counter Floyd's counters. Mm -hmm. Jose Luis Castillo did. But, yeah, that's kind of what those guys did to have the most success with Floyd. And, and when you mention um, when they're countering with speed, it's not enough to stop you. It's like the... Is that what they call you got to take one to land one sometimes? Yeah, don't that's don't give up your is. positioning as he's landing the shot mm -hmm. and still... Yeah, yeah. I think that uh, from what I've seen, or uh, not Floyd, um, Freddie Roach was one of the guys that I've been up close to that kind of knew the science behind countering the counter. And uh, even when taking, eating the counter, which counters you can eat, <laughs> which counters you need to make sure you you make that that fighter miss, you know. So he, I, I feel like he really has a craft of the offense uh, of, of boxing He really knows that Really well you, you versus a very Defensive fighter I think would have been A fun matchup Just to kind of see The, the it. pressure And the chess match a little He was just I hated, throw it. It. I hated it Because it was It was it, The mystery of chess boxing It, it requires <laughs> patience For this So you would think That the counter puncher Requires a lot of patience For him But it re actually requires A lot of patience From, from you the, the Yeah the aggressive fighter Because while you're 
releasing. He's creating space for his counters and continuing to move. And especially on the amateur level, I mean, it was create space, da da da, create space, da da da. Yeah. Those Cubans that I fought, it was like that, da da da, space, da da da. And that more more than time, I think two out of the three Cubans that I lost to as an amateur, they just they created the space. I walked into it. Of course, I gave mine. The point system didn't help me. It helped them. You yeah. know, the list goes on. You know, so um, it, it requires a lot of patience if you are an aggressive fighter because you have to be open minded enough to see the counters that are coming, make those miss. You know, and then if you do get hit, you know, what I mean, you gotta keep your your confidence up and you and know it's willing. Just, it's willing to being able to do something and knowing something is going to be coming back to you. It's like. I'm going to force the action, but there's a reaction coming back to you. Yeah. What's up? I'm Showtime Sean Porter. I'm Ant. Follow me on IG. Ant with two T's. Let's do All it. Right, Let's here, do right. it again. Let's All right. Again. Just introduce yourself. Okay. And then tell them, and then you tell them what to do. I'm Showtime Sean Porter. I'm Anthony Brenno. Carson A. Merck. Like, subscribe, comment. This is the Porter way.